G'day girls and boys, welcome back to the next episode of Maths. We're starting off with a flashback from the last video. We are proving that if an integer n is not divisible by 3, then the integer squared plus 2 is divisible by 3. If you're feeling spicy, pause the video and try yourself a 4. I ruin it for you. Alright, here we go. So last video we looked at how we can write a number is divisible by 3. We're going to write it as 3 times something. However, for this time we want to write it as not divisible by 3. There's two ways we can do that. One of them is, it could be 3 times something plus 1, or it could be 3 times something plus 2. Okay, Either of these two expressions are going to give us an integer that is not divisible by 3, given that k is an integer. So for this one we have two cases, k plus 3k plus 1 or 3k plus 2. We're going to have to work with both of these to show that uh, squared plus 2 gives us an answer that is divisible by 3. Let's start off with the first one. We'll take our n, which is 3k plus 1, and we're going to square it and then add 2. Expanding out this bracket, we'll get 9k squared plus 6k plus 1. The 1 and the 2 go together to make, um, how many, hang on, uh, 3. And so we have 3 as a common factor of all three terms. We can yank it out the front and we have 3 outside of 3k squared plus 2k plus 1. So we have 3 times something. So we are divisible by 3. So the first condition is met for case 1. Let's now try the same thing with case 2 when n is equal to 3 times k plus 2. So we're going to square it and now we're going to add 2. Alright, expanding out we get 9k squared, we get 12k in the middle and then we have a 4 on the ends. The 4 and the 2 go together to make a 6 which is conveniently um, a multiple of 3. So we can factor 3 out the front of all three terms once again. And so we have 3 outside of 3k squared plus 4k plus 2. Now inside is just a number. So we have 3 times something where that something is an integer. And so we've shown that for the second case, we also end up with something that is divisible by 3. So for our two forms of a number that is, that is not divisible by 3, the result when we square it and add 2 is always divisible by 3. So there is our proof. Okay, today's lesson is a quick one on proving things using a contrapositive. So as a quick warm-up, in case you've forgotten from our first video lesson, we're going to find the contrapositive of these statements. So for our first one, we have, if it's a bicycle, it has two wheels. Now for the contrapositive, we are going to take the negation of both parts of this statement and we are going to reverse the direction. So the negation of having two wheels is not having two wheels. The negation of being a bicycle is not being a bicycle. So our contrapositive statement is, if it does not have two wheels, it's not a bicycle. Now our original statement was true, if it's a bicycle it has two wheels. Our contrapositive statement is also true. This, this always happens with contrapositives. If your original statement is true, so is your contrapositive. If your original statement is false, then your contrapositive will also be false. So they are referred to as logically equivalent. For our second one, if a triangle has two equal sides, it must have two equal angles. So reversing the direction and negating, we have if a triangle does not have two equal angles, it must not have two equal sides. Once again, original statement was true and so is our contrapositive statement. So that's really useful because sometimes our, our contrapositive statement is much easier to prove than our original statement. So for today, we're gonna to be taking statements that seem difficult to prove we are going to be writing the contrapositive statement and then proving that instead. So this proof, so this uh, this concept is called proof by contrapositive. Let's jump into a few examples. Here is our first couple. So we have if n cubed minus one is even, then n is odd. All right. So you know you're going to be using a contrapositive proof when the first part of your statement is the more complicated part. So we like to start with a nice and simple part and then work towards the complicated part. Um, if that sort of makes sense. So for this one, first thing we're going to do is write down our contrapositive statement, which is if n is even, then n cubed minus 1 is odd. Okay, now that simple part is at, the, is at the front, and this is going to make a direct proof more simple. Okay, so we're going to start with n being even, and we're going to show that n cubed minus 1 is odd. If we were working the other way, it'd be much more difficult. Okay, so n being even is going to be 2 times something, where that something is an integer. We are going to cube this and we are going to subtract 1. So n cubed minus 1 is going to give us 8k cubed minus 1. Now our goal is to show that this result is odd. So we're trying to show that it's 2 times something and then plus or minus 1. 
We can do that here. We can factor a two out of the eight and have two times four K cubed minus one. So we have two times something minus one. So we have an odd number. So we have proved the statement. If N is even, then N cubed minus one is odd. Now, because we have proven the contrapositive is true, this means that our original statement is also true. So to finish off, we're going to write, we have shown the contrapositive is true. Therefore, the original statement must also be true. Okay, this is our proof by contrapositive. Let's do the same thing with the next one. So we have n squared minus 6n plus 5 is even, then n is odd. Once again, the front half of our logical condition is the more complicated part, and the second part is nice and easy. So this is a good example of where we can flip the direction and use the contrapositive to make everything a bit more simple. Okay, so our contrapositive statement is that if n is even, then n squared minus 6n plus 5 will be odd. That's what we're trying to show. So we'll start off with n being even. So n is equal to 2 times something. Once again, 2k. k is an element of the integers. Now we're going to square this, take away 6 lots of it, and then plus 5. So we have 2k all squared minus 6 times 2k plus 5. Okay, so 2k all squared will get us 4k squared. We get minus 12k in the middle and then a plus 5 on the end. Once again, we are trying to show that this is an odd number. So we're trying to show 2 times something and then plus or minus 1. Luckily, we can split this 5 into a 4 plus 1 and then the 4 can factor out a 2. So we have 2 outside of 2k squared, take away 6k plus 2. The 2 times 2 makes the 4 and then the plus 1 on the end makes the 5. So here we have our expression written in a way. So we have 2 times something plus 1. So therefore, we have an odd number. Therefore, our contrapositive statement has been shown to be true. And therefore, our original statement must also be true. So we can conclude once again. Okay, awesome. Let's try a couple of more involved examples is what I would call them. So here is, we have proved that A times B is not divisible by 5, or if AB is not divisible by 5 then neither a nor b are divisible by five. Okay, once again, first thing we're gonna do is write down our contrapositive statement and see if that is any easier to prove. Okay, so the negation of the second part of the statement, neither a nor b being divisible by five, the negation of this is that either a or b could be divisible. Okay, so the original was both of them are not divisible, so our contrapositive for the first part is A or B are divisible. Then AB is divisible by five is the negation of the front half. All right, here is our contrapositive statement. We are going to have to show this in two cases because either A or B could be divisible by five, but the process will be very similar. So we'll start off with A being divisible by five. The way we write that is A is equal to five times something where that something is an integer. Okay, now if we do a times b, we're trying to show that this is also divisible by 5. So ab is equal to 5nb. Obviously, we can take a 5 out the front of this expression, and so we have a multiple of 5, so that means that ab is divisible by 5. Not very exciting, but we have to show it. We'll now show the other case, which is, well, maybe instead of a being divisible by 5, it could be b that is divisible by 5. So we'll let b equal five times m, where m is an element of the integers. So it's five times something. Now, if we do a times b, once again, we'll have five times m times a. We can factor the five out the front to quickly show that it is divisible by five. Okay, there we have. So we've shown that in either of the two cases, either a or b being divisible by five gets us a result that a, b is divisible by five. Now, because we have proven this red statement, our original statement up the top must also be true, proof by contrapositive. Okay, for our third one, we have proved that a squared plus b squared is even, then a plus b is even. Okay, once again, like we're seeing, the first part of the statement is more complex than the second part, so it's a good example of where we can reverse the direction using a contrapositive and make the process more easy for ourselves. All right, so writing our contrapositive, so the negation of a plus b being even is going to be a plus b is odd. The negation of our first half is a squared plus b squared is odd. Now, this is what we are trying to prove. So we'll start off with a plus b being odd. So a plus b is equal to two times something plus one by our definition of an odd number. 
Now, for this question, we need to do a little bit of clever algebra. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take a plus b and we're going to square it. You should know that this is equal to a squared plus two ab plus b squared. This means if we subtract the two ab across to the left-hand side, we end up with a squared plus b squared is equal to a plus b squared minus two ab. Okay, the reason I've done this is because we are trying to show that a squared plus b squared is odd, and we have an expression for a plus b because we also know a plus b is odd. We can write this as two times k plus one. So inside the bracket here, I'm gonna write a plus b as two k plus one because the question has told us it's an odd number. Now expanding this out, we get 4k squared plus 4k plus one. And now remember, our goal for this question was to show that a squared plus b squared is odd. So we're trying to show that the right-hand side is equal to two times something plus one, which is good because we have three terms that all have a common factor of two. We can factorize that out the front and have two outside of, um, that should probably be a 2k squared there, my bad. 2k in the middle minus ab and then plus one. So here we have our expression, two times something plus one. So we have an odd number and there we have proven our statement. Okay, contrapositive has been shown to be true, so um, therefore our original statement we were trying to show is true must also be the case. Okay, finishing off with an HSC question from the 2020 exam. So it's got three parts that range from bands three up to band five. Um, if you're feeling confident, as always, hit pause and um, have a go yourself before I dive in and go through my solution. Okay, we have a proposition P, if K plus one is divisible by three, then k cubed plus one is divisible by three as well. For part i, for two marks, we are trying to prove that this statement is true. So we're doing a direct proof where we start with the first half of the statement and prove that the second half is true. Okay, so if k plus one is divisible by three, we can write k plus one equals three times n, where n is an integer. Okay, now we're going to uh, add subtract one from both sides. So we have k equals three n minus one because we're trying to get to k cubed plus one. So we need to get k so we can cube it and then we can add one. All right, so cubing both sides of this expression, we'll have three n minus one all cubed. I'm not gonna do the full working out for how to expand three n minus one to the power of three because I'm trying to keep these videos as brief as I can. But um, if you need to do some revision of your binomial expansions from extension one, um, by all means go right ahead. Okay, so the right-hand side expanded will look like 27n cubed, take away 27n squared, plus 9n, and then take away one. Now that's k cubed, so if we add one to both sides, it's gonna get rid of that minus one, and we have k cubed plus one is equal to this. Our goal was to show that this is divisible by three, which is great because the right-hand side has three numbers with a common factor of three that we can factor out, and then we have three times a number, so we have proven the statement true. Started with k plus one, Isolate k, cube it, add one, and then factor out your common factor of three. Okay, part two for one mark is just write down the contrapositive of the proposition P. So in both 2020 and 2021 HSC exams, there have been one mark questions. One of them was multiple choice, but if you know what a contrapositive is, you can get some free marks for this. Okay, so our contrapositive statement will be k cubed plus one is not divisible by three then k plus one is also not divisible by three. So we're negating both sides and we are reversing the direction. So there is our contrapositive statement. Now for part three, this is the band five part of the question. It is write down the converse of the proposition P and state with reasons whether this is true or false. Okay, so from our first video, we know that the converse is the same statement but with the direction reversed. So we're starting with k cubed plus one being divisible by three, this implies that k cubed plus one is also divisible by three. Okay, so same statement, just flipped around. Now, we are going to try and show whether this is true or false. Now, the hint for this is that in part two, they were talking about contrapositives. That was the HSC trying to tell you, hey, remember contrapositives, it might be useful for part three. Because with our statement, we can see that the first part of the statement is the more complex part, and the second part is relatively simple. So this is a good example where we can take the contrapositive statement and try and prove that instead, rather than proving this original converse. That's gonna be our approach for this question. We're going to write the contrapositive of this statement. So we'll have k plus one not divisible by three. 
Um, this implies kq plus one also not divisible by three. Okay, lucky we did the flashback. So we have a practice of how to write some things being not divisible by three, trying to show that the um, right-hand side is also true. All right, so we need to do two cases. Either k plus one is three times something plus one, or k plus one could be three times something plus two. Okay, now for the first case, we're going to say, well, if k plus one is equal to three n plus one, that means that k cubed plus one will be three n all cubed plus one. So we get 27 n cubed plus one. Now we are trying to show this is not divisible by three. So we're trying to show three times something and then plus one or plus two. We'll factor the three out of the 27 n cubed. So we have three times nine n cubed plus one. So we have three times something plus one. So this is clearly not divisible by three. So it works for case one when we have three n plus one. Let's now show that it also works for case two where we have three n plus two. Okay, so we have k plus 1 equals 3n plus 2. If we take away 1 from both sides, we get k is equal to 3n plus 1. Now we are going to cube both sides of this expression. Once again, expanding this out very quickly without working out to save some time. So the right-hand side turns out to be 27n cubed plus 27n squared plus 9n plus 1. Okay, now we're trying to look at k plus 1, so we're just going to add, sorry, k, k cubed plus 1. So we're going to add 1 to both sides, so this 1 turns into a 2. Now we can factor a 3 out of these expressions, and we have 3 times something plus 2. So now it's pretty clear that this is not divisible by 3 as well, okay, because we have 3 times a number plus 2. So case 1 and case 2 both work, so the contrapositive statement has been shown to be true. That means the original statement, which was the converse of P, uh, has also shown to be true. So there you go, fair bit of work, but that's why it was a three mark question because we had to do two separate cases. All right, that's it for today. Cheers for watching that. I hope that was helpful in some way and I'll see you in the next proof video. Bye for now.